Good day, grade 11s. Welcome to this next lesson. Um, we're going to carry on with leftist equations and then move on to some reversion questions. So let's get stuck in straight away with these electricity questions. OK, it says consider the following circuit. When the switch is closed, voltmeter V1 reads 4 volts, V2 reads 1.6 volts and voltmeter V4 reads 1 volt. So let's point to find out where these are. Voltmeter V1 reads 4 volts. Voltmeter V2 reads 1.6 volts. And voltmeter V4 reads 1 volt. Okay, so do you agree that before we carry on, we can actually find out how much V3 should read? Because all of these three should add up to 4 volts, okay? That is what should happen because we're assuming there's no internal resistance. So all the voltage across the circuit, well, it says when this is closed anyway. So this voltage is telling us how much voltage is applied to the circuit. So we could say 4 is equal to 1 plus V3 plus uh, 1,6. So therefore we've got 4 minus 2,6 is equal to V3. So V3 is going to be 1,4 volts. So that's 1,4 volts. And in fact, that is the answer to that question that I've just seen it now. It says find the effective resistance of combination of three resistors. Now remember the only, it's not tricky at all. Resistors in series are just additive. Remember, they're just additive. So all we do is add up the resistance and we can do that and get that we've got the total resistance is 5 plus 7 plus 8, 8 plus 7 is 15, plus 5 is 20, so that is 20 ohms. Now it says, if the current passing through the 8 ohm resistor is 0, 0,2 amps, what will the current through the 5 ohm resistor be? Well, again, this is a really easy question. They're just making sure you know all your basics. And I'm really hoping you know that what should what you should know that therefore that this is also going to be 0, 0,2 amps for the simple reason that the current in a series circuit is the same the whole way through. Next, it says a charge of 48 coulombs flows through a circuit in two minutes. So the charge is for, which is Q, is 48 coulombs. Okay, and it's asking you what is the current? What is a current? Now, if you go and look at your formula sheet and they tell us, sorry, T is one, sorry, in two minutes, two minutes, two minutes which we can change immediately to 120 seconds. So if you look at your formula sheets, you can see that, that Q is equal to IT. So the Q we've got, the T we've got, so we can solve for I. So we can say 48 divided by 120 is going to be the current, give me the current, which we want. So we're going to go 48 divided by 120 equals SD button 0,4. So the current I equals 0,4 amps. And there you go. Right, let's move on. Right, now let's go to look for something slightly more complicated because you'll see that there is a, if you go work from the clock, anti-clockwise from the battery, here's your battery or your cell, through the ammeter, he has a one ohm resistor. Then you've got two resistors in parallel, and then you've got a single resistor, and you're back there again. It says the reading on the ammeter is two amps. Okay. And the cell is marked 12 volts. The cell is marked 12 volts. First thing it says is determine the combined resistance of the parallel set of resistors. So we've got 1 over R parallel equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2, which means it's 1 over 18 plus 1 over 6. Common denominator is 18. So we've got 1 plus 3, which is going to be 4 over 18, but that's 1 over R parallel. Therefore, do you agree that R parallel is going to be 18 divided by 4, 
which is going to be 4 comma that goes in these with 24 comma 5 ohms the combined resistance of the parallel set of resistors is 4 comma 5 ohms now they say what is the total resistance of the circuit so do you agree now that we've got that this effectively is 4,5 ohms, we can say, well, if that's the case, wait a minute, if that's the case, then we've got that this is 1 ohm and this is 0,5 ohms and they're all in series. So we've got 1 plus 4,5 plus 0,5 which means that it equals 6 ohms. Now it says calculate the current flowing in the 18 ohm resistor. Okay, so do you agree that you've got... Okay. Do you, there are a couple of ways you can do it. The one way is to say, okay, fine. Well, do you agree that the current, this two amps current has to split? Okay, so what we have, and I just want to erase some of this so that I've got space to write. Okay, so do you agree it comes along la 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 and splits up? into my 18 ohms and it splits up into the 6 ohms, right? So there is 2 amps coming through here, 2 amperes coming through here. It splits up in a ratio of 18 to 6, but it's a reverse ratio, okay? In other words, more current goes through the smaller resistor, but the ratio is the ratio of the resistances. If we divide both of these sides by 6, then I get 3 to 1. So do you agree that there are four parts? There's one part here and three parts here, so there's four parts. So we can go and take our two amperes and divide it by 4, and we get 0, 0,5 amperes. Right, so that means that 0, 0,5, 0, 0,5 times three parts is going to go through the 18 ohm resistor and 0, 0,5 times one part is going to go through the 6 ohm resistor and they want the current flowing through the 18 ohm resistor which is going to be 0, 0,5 times by three which is going to be 0, wrong sorry eraser 1,5 it's going to be 1,5 amperes. It says if the reading on voltmeter V1 is 1 volt, okay, the reading of V1 is 1 volt, when, what would you expect the reading on V2 to be? Okay, if that's the case, we know that V is equal to IR, okay, we can see that the current here is, I mean, the resistance here is 0.5. And we're saying that if this is 0 0.5, and then that's 1, because we're going 1 is equal to I, 0 0.5, okay? So 1 divided by 0 0.5 is 2 amps. So do you agree? So therefore, we can say that the, we expect the reading of volume to be, to be 2 volts, okay? So we expect it to be 2 volts. What is the potential difference across the parallel resistors? Well, the total voltage we've been given is what is 12 volts, right? We know that that is 1 and that is 2. Therefore, the difference should be the amount of voltage we're expecting. So that's going to be 3 from 12 is 9 volts, which makes sense because the total resistance is 4.5. Total current is 2, so V is equal to I times R. So that's 2 times 4.5, which is 9 volts. So there are two ways you can get it. You could have either done the V equals IR, or you could have subtracted the total volts from the volts that you had in your cell, specifically because this um, doesn't lose any voltage due to internal resistance. 
right now we have a question where there obviously is internal resistance because we've got a little battery here and we've got this little internal resistance here you've got switch s1 the ammeter r1 r2 r3 switch 2 r4 and it says in the circuit below the battery has an emf of 12 volts and an internal resistance of r three resistors the three resistors and a light bulb are connected as shown in the diagram the resistance of the bulb is two ohms initially both switches s1 and s2 are open assume that the connecting wire is an ammeter of negligible, negligible resistance okay now they close only switch one so do you agree the circuit does this now? It does la 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 Okay, it doesn't go through here at all. Only goes through R1 and R2. And it says the reading on the voltmeter drops to 10.8 volts. The reading on the voltmeter drops. Okay. Calculate the reading on the ammeter. So we've got V is equal to IR. The voltmeter reading is now 10,8. The current is what we're trying to find out. And the total resistance of the circuit is 12 volts. And the reason I'm using this 10,8 is because obviously it's measuring the external resistance, I mean, external voltage since the switch is closed. Okay, it's not measuring the EMF. So therefore we can say that I is equal to 10,8 divided by 12. Whoopsie, what happened? Let's go back here. And we want, there we go. 10.8, there's that, 0.8 divided by 12 equals, 0,9. So the current is 0,9 amps. Okay, so it says 0,9 amps. The internal resistance R for the battery. Now we know that the last volts, we know that the EMF equals 12 volts. Okay, we know that the volts to the circuit is 10,8 volts, which means the V last is going to be 1,2 volts and we know the current is 0,9 amperes and we, therefore we can see what the internal resistance is because we can go V last is equal to I little r where r is the internal resistance so that's going to be the last volts um, which is 1,2 Current is 0,9, and that's the in, little internal resistance. So R is going to be 1,2 over 0,9, which we need a calculator for. We need 1.2, oh, it's going to be 4 over 3, divided by 0.9 equals, yep, 1,33. So R is 1,33 recurring ohms. Now it says, that's that one and that one, when both switches are open, okay, so now the switch is open as well, so we're including R3 and R4. Now the ammeter reads 1,5 amps. Okay, so you can see that the ammeter has gone up, and the reason for that is because the resistance has gone down. It says calculate the power dissipated by the bulb. Calculate the power dissipated by the bulb. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is erase some stuff so that we've got space to write. And then we're going to look at our power equations and decide which one we're going to use. Okay. So, our power equations are P is W over delta T, which is equal to VI, which is equal to I squared R, which equals V squared over R. And it says it wants us to calculate the power dissipated. 
over this bar. We have the resistance R equals 2 ohms. We have the current of this, it's 1.5 amps. We don't have the volts. Okay, so I'm thinking we're going to have to use this equation here. P is equal to I squared R, where R is your 2 ohms, okay, and 1.5 amps is part of the resistance, I mean part of the current that's going to go through here. So now the current is, looks like this. There is a 6 ohm, and then there is a 3 ohm and a 2 ohm that have joined together. So somehow we have to get 1.5 amps of current through to here. So do you agree that 6 plus 5 is 11? So we're going to take our 1 comma 5 and we're going to multiply divided by 11. One point five, and we're going to divide it by eleven, right? And then we're going to multiply it by. We want to see how much is going through here, yeah, so by six. Okay, so if we do that, we go one point five times six equals divided by eleven equals 0.82 so that's 0.82 and that is the the current okay the current so therefore the power is going to be 0.82 squared multiplied by r where r was what did we say two ohms Right, so let's get out our calculator. So that's 0 0.82, sorry, squared, multiplied by two equals one comma three four four eight. So I would say one comma three four. Power is equal to one comma three four. Power is watts. There we go. Cool. Next question. What effect will the closing of both switches have on the last volt? Now, this is interesting. Because do you see that the reading on the ammeter went from 0 0.9 amps to 1.5 amps? Okay. It says if you have right, any increase, decrease, remain the same, and then fully explain your answer. So, do you agree that... Think of it, okay, think of it this way. The last volt is caused by friction, okay? So the more electrons they are going around the circuit or the more quickly they're going around the circuit, the more friction there is, the greater the last volt. So by increasing the current, by adding the resistance into parallel, we've reduced the overall resistance, which then increases this current, which in that case is now going to increase the internal resistance. It's going to increase the internal resistance. Right, next question. A battery of an unknown EMF, okay, but it has an internal resistance of 0.5 ohms, it is connected to three resistors, one, two, three, and a high resistance voltmeter and an ammeter of negligible resistance as shown below. The reading on the ammeter is 0.2 amps. 0.2 amps. It says calculate the reading on the voltmeter. So the voltmeter is reading the volts supplied to the circuit. Okay. So what's going to happen is this is going to be coming along here and going. Do -do 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 but at the same time, it's going along here, do, 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 do. it's also going up here and across there and through there and down there. So effectively, this voltmeter is in parallel with either the 2 ohm resistor or the 2, the 4 ohm and the 8 ohm resistor. So we have the current, which is 0 0.2. We have the resistance here of 2 ohms. So do you, actually no, 
we have the resistance here of 12 ohms. If you agree, we can work out the voltage. V is equal to IR. So V is going to be the current, which is 12 multiplied by this ammeter of 0, 0,2, which is, let's do it properly, 12 times 0, 0.2 equals 2.4 2.4 volts so it said the reading on the voltmeter is going to be 2.4 volts right now it says the total current supplied by the battery okay so if we know that that is giving us 0 0.2 amps we need to find out what would happen to this ammeter that i'm drawing here what is the current on that so we know that the voltage is 2.4. Now we need to work out the number of ohms. We've got the number of ohms is 2. So you can work out the current, right? So we can go V is equal to IR. We've got the voltage is 2,4. We've got the resistance is 2, and we want the current. So therefore, the current is going to be 1,2 amperes. So that's 1,2 amperes. Now it says the EMF of the battery. Okay. Oh, sorry, that was not the total current of the supply. That was just that one, 0 0.2, that we have to add the 0 0.2 supplied down here, which was split up, and it gives us 1,4 amperes. Okay, so now it says the EMF of the battery. EMF is equal to I big R plus I little r. Okay. So we've got the EMF. Um, let's sort of work it out. The current in the total current in the circuit is 1, 4. The external resistance is, have we worked it out? I don't think we have the external resistance is going to be 1 over 12 plus 1 over 2. Oh dear. Which is why am I saying that? Because 4 plus 8 is 12, but they're in parallel with this 2 ohm resistor. So therefore, we could say 1 plus 12. Okay, so the common denominator of 12 is 1 plus 6, that's 7 over 12. So the total common resistance is 12 over 7 plus I, which we don't know, we do, we do know it's 1.4, times by the internal resistance, which they gave us is 0, 0.5. Right, so let us put that in our calculator, 1.4 multiplied by 12 divided by 7 equals added to bracket 1,4 times 0, 0,5 close bracket equals 31 over 10 which is 3,1 volts. So the EMF of this battery is 3,1 volts. Now it says, how would the voltmeter reading change if the 2 ohm resistor is then removed from the circuit? Write down only increase, decrease remains the same. Okay, so the voltage is the amount of energy required to be sent through the circuit. If we remove the 3 ohm resistor, because it's been in parallel the whole time, there's going to be remains the same. Because the fact that this 2 ohm was parallel to the um, 4 ohm and the 8 ohm, and therefore removing it actually makes no difference to the amount of voltage that the cell is providing. Right, so now let's carry on. We're going to carry on with doing some more um, mechanical um, not necessarily reversion, but um, mechanical stuff, but um, forces and stuff. Okay, sorry, just a second. Sorry about that. It says the diagram below shows a rope and pulley arrangement on a device being used to lift 800 Newton object. Now, if you look 
on the diagram it says 800 kilograms and if you look on the words it's 800 newtons guys if this happens to you guys in a test and exam and there's no one to ask always use the information from the blurb as a more accurate um, description in other words use the information so i'm going to change this to be newtons okay assume the ropes are light and inextensible and that they don't stretch or pull or anything okay we want to calculate they want us to calculate the magnitude of tensions in T1 and T2. Okay, so what you need to realize is that this bit here, let me just get a highlighter. This bit here is all joint. So therefore that, amen, is all T1. And similarly, This year is all T2. Okay, all of it is T2. So therefore, do you agree that we could draw this as being T2 and T1? And then we've got a force down of 800 newtons which is due to gravity okay so they want us to now work out the tensions in t1 and t2 so if we had to draw this do you agree that that there would be this 800 newtons going down so it's 800 newtons okay now to draw the tension t1 we have to start from this middle point and then we have to work way in the direction of the vector okay so in other words, this needs to be 120 degrees. So then we're going to go up here. And that angle there, this one here, has to be 120 degrees. Which means what? It means that this angle is 60 degrees. Then we've got, that's T1, right? Then we've got T2. And T2 has gone the other way. She's got... Um, has gone the other way. It's got the, this line going up here. Okay, so now let's have a look at it in the angles. This angle here, the whole of this is 140 degrees. Okay, right. So therefore, we've got that this is 140 degrees. That there doesn't look like 140 degrees. Oh, sorry that there the whole of that is 140 degrees which means that this material is 40 degrees which means we can alternate and that's 40 degrees okay so now what we need to do is find that angle there so that's 40 and that's 60 and that makes it 100 which means that this angle is 80 degrees there okay and we know that the down is 800 newtons so do you agree we can work out T1 and T2 with sine rule? We can say T1 over sine of 40 degrees is equal to T2, sorry, um, which is equal to T2 over sine of 60 degrees, which is all equal to um, Okay, which is all equal to 800 over sine of, what is that? That's 40 and the whole of that is 100 and, well actually that's going to be 80 degrees, sine 80 degrees. Sorry, I need to quite forget that one.
day. Um, if it's slightly over that, then we get the maximum weight. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to say, um, first of all, that F net equals zero. We're going to assume that we want the maximum weight. So for that, F net is zero. And then obviously we can then move on to get, um, we can work out what the next weight up will be. We can say that it's going to be bigger than that weight. So do you agree that if they want to know the maximum weight of block P for which Q will just begin to slip? In other words, we need T2 um, to overcome the force of friction here. Do you agree? We need T2 to overcome the force of friction. So we want the F net. We actually want the F net of P to be greater than or equal to this force of friction. So let's work out the force of friction first. The force of friction is mu K F net, which is mu K M, okay, um, and then the acceleration. But remember that this here is actually, remember that this is FG perpendicular. Okay, it is a normal force or F normal. Okay, so this acceleration is actually G due to the force of gravity. So it is mu K it gave us is 0 0.25. That's 0 0.25 multiplied by the mass of Q, which they tell us is 70 multiplied by the acceleration due to gravity, which is 9,8. So if we pop in that calculator, you get 0 0.25 multiplied by 70 multiplied by 9,8 equals 171.5 newtons, 171.5 newtons. Okay, so that is the force with which T2 has to pull the Q, okay? So now we know that the T2 has to be 171,5 newtons minimum, okay? It wants the maximum weight of block P. Okay, so if we had to redraw this into a special triangle, well not special, this is 35 degrees, and this bit here is 171,5 newtons. Do you agree we could find that size there? And if we can find that size there, we've got the maximum weight of block P. So let's just erase some writing so that you can see what I'm doing. Okay, I'm going to change pen colors so you can see. So we've got a little triangle that says that this is 35 degrees. We've worked out that T2 has got to be 171,5 newtons, okay? We also would like to work out the maximum um, vertical component that would be. So we could either use Sokoto or some other method, but in this case, I'm going to use Sokoto. So we've got Sokoto. And we have the adjacent. We want the opposite. So we're going to use Toa. The adjacent we know is 171,5 Newtons. He's got blonde, uh, 171,5 newtons. Uh, sorry guys, I don't know what's going on here. Um, okay, so that day is going to give us this maximum weight here. And guys, unfortunately we've run out of time here, so we'll carry on with this question in the next lesson. Have a great day.